Hi everybody, I just want to do another quick update about where I kind of am with the property kind of stuff after everything that's going on over the last um, even couple of days, what's going on over the last couple of days and the kind of pound as well. Pound is recovering a wee bit, which is quite good. Um, not that much, it could go down further. The looks like the strength of the dollar could possibly go up, um, but it's kind of hitting a peak just now, so it could come back down a wee bit. But I think there's a wee bit to go for the US dollar and then it'll come back down. Um, and then we should see the pound start rising with the euro. Um, but there's loads of different things happening. But with regards to property, what I've been thinking is, OK, at what point does it not become tenable to, or does it not become viable to invest in property when we're doing kind of what we're doing, if we're investing in kind of buy-to-lets? At what point does it stop um, being kind of profitable for us? So I thought I'd make up a calculator um, using a spreadsheet and looking at ROCE, that's a return on capital employed. Uh, and looking at that. So I want to go over this with you as well. So here is a calculator that I've made up. So we can see here we've got interest rates and it's going up to 15%. So we'll just do one just now. And just say, for example, we're going to buy a home for, so I've got a drop down here for 200,000 pounds or dollars, wherever you are, that's going to work for you as well. And I'm going to assume there's a 25% um, deposit that you're going to put down. If it's a buy to let, usually you get a 75% loan to value. So 25% deposit, which would be 50,000. And say we want to buy properties, or I want to buy properties, um, where I can add value to it. Either adding another bedroom, or it needs done up. Uh, and there's a lot of places like that, or preferably both. So you could buy a one bedroom flat that needs done up, but you could then, once you've done it up, or at the same time, turn it into a two bedroom flat, and do it up, and you get higher um, kind of rental cost that way as well, but you do it up to a high standard. So say the refurb cost is going to be, I don't know, for a £200,000 house, say, I can you go for about 10 to 12% when I'm looking at that. So say 25000 stamp duty for a house of 200000 it wouldn't be 16600 so we'll say 200 and it's an additional property, so you pay extra tax on ADS, what's called. Uh, it's a wee bit higher in Scotland as well, but it'll be around about the same probably across the UK. So 9,100 for stamp duty, legal's 1,500. So the total initial cost, which is what we're going to base the ROC on, uh, or the ROCE on, which is the uh, return on capital employed, is 85,600. Say for that type of property, you're probably going to get maybe 1,600 per month. The mortgage, this is with a 1% interest rate, and there's there's no mortgages available 1% just now, but the mortgage would be 125. Management fee, I'm saying 10%. Maintenance, I'm working out 5%. And insurance, I'm working out about 2.5%. Um, so the total expenses is 405. So a gross yield on that, I don't think this is kind of particularly helpful. A gross yield on those numbers would be 9.6%. And the way you get the gross yield is just taking how much you would be charging as a rental income, so 1,600 times 12, and dividing that by the, the cost of the actual house, the value of the property, which is 200,000, and you get a gross yield of 9.6%. That doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't take into account interest rates. It doesn't really take into account anything else apart from the rental income and the price of the house. So it doesn't really tell us much. Net yield would be a better figure, and that's rental income minus all the costs, times that by 12, and divide that by 200, that's your net yield. But again, it doesn't really tell us much. So the ROCE is the return on capital employed. So that's how much you put in. So you put in 50,000 plus 9,100 plus 1,500 plus 25,000 refurb costs. So it's 85,600. So you just use this figure, 85,600. Same rental income minus your expenses and then multiplying that or dividing that by 85,600 times by 100, you get 16.5%. So that's the ROCE. Now, when you look at that, you've got to say, okay, what is the interest rate just now? What's the inflation rate just now? The real inflation rate, I don't think, is at 13%. Um, it, the, the inflation rate is kind of designed on a, a kind of basket of measures. But if we look at the inflation rate, it's same, being around about 7 or 8%. Um, we can base our kind of thinking on the ROCE and if it's going to be worthwhile going for a buy to let. So interest rate, we'll change that to 2%. What does it do to everything? It ch changes the ROCE to 15%. You can see the mortgage has gone up. So total expenses has gone up. 
So probably right now, buy to let mortgages, you're probably going to get the lowest, probably about 4%. So you can see at 4%, the total expenses have gone up to 780. At 1%, it was 405. So that's quite a significant jump. And that brings down your net yield and your ROCE down quite significantly as well. So if we change it to 5%, again, it's coming down. Net yield 4.17. ROCE 9.74. So 5%, I would still say this is worth going because we're not taking into consideration here the, the actual capital appreciation of the house. This is purely based on the rental income and how much it cost, how much it's cost to do the property up. So we'll go for 6%. So net yield is 3.42%. ROCE is 7.99%. 7%. Coming down 6.24% at 8% interest rate, 4.49. And you can see that net yield of 1.92 coming down, 9%. Look at the total expenses though. Compared to 400, it's went up £1,000 with the interest rates at 9%. Now remember the interest rates, uh, that's not the Bank of England base rates. Um, usually the buy to let mortgages are a couple of percent higher than the Bank of England base rate. So the interest rate here, if the Bank of England, that will probably be 7% for the Bank of England base rate, plus 2% for what the mortgage companies are going to charge. So on this particular occasion, probably around about 10% interest rates would be the cutoff point and you just say, it's just not worth it. Unless purely what you're going for is capital appreciation. If you can get a brilliant price, for the house. So just say the house price is you could get 15% below the kind of current market value and you still think it's going to go down a wee bit but would you be better being in the game and looking for the capital appreciation in the long term for ten, the next 10 years or something or would you be better holding your money in the bank? For me, I don't, I don't personally feel uncomfortable holding money in the bank. Um, so I would rather have it in property but you've got to have a certain cut off point where you say is better holding off until we see what the lay of the land is. So that's my thinking just now. So that's the calculator. If you want it, just drop me a note in the comments. I don't know how useful it is, and I don't know um, if it's going to be useful for you or not. But I, I'm finding it useful when I'm looking for properties. I'm really kind of finding this useful and just saying, OK, what is the cutoff point? And most of the cutoff points are around about 7 or 8%. So I've got 8% and I would still say if I'm getting a return on my capital employed of 4.49%, I would rather have it in the house than the bank at this price. You might say, oh, it's not worth all the hassle, but I would rather have it in a property uh, earning 4.49% uh, per year rather than having it in the bank, which is earning, I don't know, 1.5% 1, 1 probably in a savings account. But I feel safer with it in the house as well. So I don't really feel safe in these kind of times having money in the bank or a lot of money in the bank. And remember, we've just sold our property um, as well, not long sold a property. And we made a profit on that. We managed to sell it at the peak. Um, so we've made a profit on that. So it's not good having a lot of money in the bank, I feel, in my opinion. So I would say 8% is a cut-off rate, which is probably about 6% Bank of England base rate. Um, but let me know if I've missed anything here or if you've got any comments about this or what you're thinking about this as well. Am I panicking just now? I don't, I'm not panicking at all. I'm just keeping my powder dry just now or we're keeping our powder dry just now and just going, okay, time to still look for properties and seeing if we can get a good deal on them. If we can get a good deal, just be prepared to walk away and just say, that's fine. If you're not going to accept that offer, that's cool and, and there's no kind of hard feeling to just walk away from it. Um, knowing that there probably will be opportunities in the future. Um, we're buying quality. We're looking for quality. We, we love kind of the Victorian properties. We love that. It's always going to sell in the future. It's always going to rent out as well. There's a perceived kind of value of Victorian properties where we stay in Glasgow. So we're going to stick with that um, and see if we can add value to the property as well as maybe adding another bedroom possibly um, and look for the capital appreciation for long term. And we're not too bothered about the rental income short term. Um, this is a, an investment for the long term. Okay, hope that helps. Until next time, namaste. Take care. Bye now.